Hi, welcome to the Cross TV. I'm David Beanie and we're still in Amsterdam. It's day seven. We've just seen the England men's play the Netherlands, the host, and they won 18-4. Earlier we saw the women win against Switzerland 23-2. Stay tuned for more news. Hi, I'm Liv Wimpenny and I play midfield attack for England and I'm here at the European Championships. Um, I think I played reasonably well considering we had to play all left-handed. Hi, I'm Alex Bruce, number 34, um, straight attack for England. I didn't really know too much about the Swiss. I know that we played um, in Switzerland last year at the European Club Championships with um, my club, Oxton. Um, they weren't that strong there, but um, I was pretty impressed with what I saw today from them. Um, our aims for the game were to stay um, disciplined throughout the field, um, control in attack, um, working through some moves that we've done in training, and um, basically just to remain confident throughout the game. Yeah, the moves we um, planned were pretty successful. We were able to work through quite a lot of them. Um, obviously, we had to adapt to the way that um, we had to play, but yeah, we, we were successful with them. Um, my personal aims for the game were to um, not necessarily give the first feed, which is something which I tend to do quite a lot, um, to remain composed and um, try and drive and maybe draw the foul um, without taking the shot. Um, I'd have to say that on the England team in attack, the stand-up play was Kat Gaunt, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, normally a goalkeeper, but I think she did pretty well in attack today. I wouldn't say that it was necessarily easy to score today, but um, I think that I had a lot to think about with the moves going on, which I wouldn't necessarily do back home. So it's a totally different atmosphere, so I couldn't really compare the two. To be honest, I got a bit of stick on um, the first game for actually shooting through somebody. Um, second game, yeah, I shouldn't have really shot that, but. Um, today I thought it was a bit unlucky, I didn't really think it was a yellow card. Now my club Oxton, um, we have been successful recently but it's like been a bit of a struggle for us. If you go back about 10 years we were getting absolutely beaten um, every single game so it's been like a steady progression for us. Our coach Justin Dunn um, has done an amazing job with us. Um, we've got so many players here, we've got five um, European club players um, playing for England, we've got one on the Scotland team as well so we're such a successful club and I'm so proud of what we've been able to achieve. If you'd like look at um, mine and Sophie Brett's um, assist and goal tallies yeah we're um, we definitely help each other on the pitch um, yeah we've got a strong connection we're always looking for each other but we've got to be able to um, mix in and use other players as well so yeah definitely I'd always say it's a bonus having your own team on your national team with you yeah first technique on my shooting is obviously don't shoot through people that's not good um, yeah just look for the net and do a quick little fake and shoot low never shoot high <laughs> I'm just, it's my first um, major tournament with England. I'm really looking forward to um, just enjoying it, enjoying every moment of this um, Europeans and just cherishing it. Hi, my name is David Mather. I'm head strength and conditioning coach for England lacrosse team. Well, to start with, it's mainly to get like to get them fit and strong for the competition. It started, we started at Christmas time. We all two sets a week in the gym with them to get them strong and fit. Then as it progressed on, we actually uh, went on to the field and this one field session to build the fitness up from there. And then we just carried on from there to the really up to the competition. Everything, we worked on strength, power, stamina, because if you improve your maximum strength, everything relative to that becomes easier. So if you get them stronger, then it takes less out on each game. But also getting the nutritional side right is important. Well, make sure they get eat enough calories and they just don't from the normal day lives eating three, three and a half thousand calories. We have really up it when we rate it to like five, five and a half thousand calories a day just to make sure they can recover from game today. They've been injured but not muscle injuries. So on my part, I'm excited that you'll get general wear and tear, like you'll get a few strains in your shoulder from overuse injuries and a few mainly cuts and blisters is a big one with the AstroTurf being like it is. So we're not putting no major injuries up but there is niggles in the camp and also a few injuries that you can't do nothing about from impact injuries. It's really, like so every morning we wake up and give them a big stretch out, just make sure because they're all stiff from the games. You know, especially tonight, we're not getting back to the hotel till after 8 o'clock. By the time we've had our evening meal, it's like 9 o'clock, so we'll have to stiffen up all the time. So we'll get in there, give them ice baths, send a bit longer in the ice baths uh, as we go along the tournament, and just more stretching, trying to cut down the work load, but also cut down, walk into the ground, try and get a lift down here, and just minimise the amount of work they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Dave's great and uh, he supplies a lot of Viper boost which will all get us excited for the games and, and I certainly I think that will help us carry us through. And the standard of the NCA is a bit different to the European Championships, mainly the speed. Um, international lacrosse is a bit slower, there aren't any uh, clearing time limits and uh, 
and um, box stalling calls. It's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more slower. But uh, there are some great players out here, and, and uh, that certainly translates back to the NCAA as well. It's not so much of a challenge to come to the Europeans. It's just uh, a bit different. You have to adjust to certain certain rules, like the get it and keep it in, and um, the clearing time limit. There aren't those clocks, so it's a lot less relaxed and a lot less a lot less on your mind to bring the ball over. You can slow it down. You have a lot more patience. But um, altogether, it's not too hard to translate. It's good. Uh, the midfield worked really well as a unit today. We, we moved the ball, we especially we drew the slide well and then, and then banged it and, and found the backside, which we've, uh, which we've managed to do throughout the tournament, but it especially, especially showed tonight well. Get yeah, prepared for our quarterfinals before we move on and um, hopefully we'll move all the way to the final and get that gold. But I'd love to meet either the, the Scottish or the Welsh just for a bit of a rivalry game. That's always fun. We know a lot of players on those teams, so that'll be a good time. It was a game that came in with a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype, a lot of attraction, just because it's you know the local team, the, the host host nation, and we knew that they were you know going to come out of a uh, they they haven't quite been where they expected to be this tournament, and so we knew they were going to come out with a lot of fire, a lot of passion, play a hard fought game, and we knew we had to come out strong from the get go. We knew they had a couple of strong midfielders. Uh, all, all their guys are very talented, but we knew especially that they had a couple of midfielders that they like to work the ball through, number 12 and number 22. So we really had to key on them and, and follow the success of the other teams that had, uh, that had played them so far. I, I was down low on close defense today, so I was usually marked up on number 43. Uh, he also had a very standout game. Um, he's very good with both hands, and I spent most of my time guarding him. Uh, Nando and Cage was just stellar for us, setting the tempo, keeping us motivated, uh, controlling our outlets and controlling uh, our heads at a couple of, couple of instances throughout the game. And he just was a great presence uh, from the back, setting the tempo all the way through, through forward to the attack. If we could get another game against uh, Finland, that would be great. Uh, they, they've had a bit of an up and down tournament so far, but a couple of friends on the team, a couple of guys back from the States who, I'd love to, who I played against in college and I'd love to get a chance to go out again.